The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be ashamed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to be headed to the tomb at the very break of day, the woman must have gotten up awful early. Must have gotten up before the sun, for sure. And there's something about those pre-dawn hours. There's something about that time that is somehow, that darkness is somehow different than the darkness at 10 o'clock at night. Right? It's different than the darkness at midnight. There's, there's something there. The, the day is, the day is still ahead, but it's not yet fully there. I don't know about you. There's only a couple reasons I think that people tend to be up at this hour of the day. Either they are teachers or they used to be teachers. <laughs> but beyond that it's like you got to get up to get a flight you got to get up to go to a doctor's appointment or a surgery some have some sort of procedure or else you're driving kids to a baseball game or a soccer game or something like that but there's just something that feels different about that time I wonder what the women were talking about as they headed to the tomb because they went to the tomb knowing that they weren't going to be able to do what they were hoping to do. They expected when they got there that they were going to find the tomb sealed, a big heavy stone in front of it. Mark tells us as he narrates this that the women were talking amongst themselves that they, they didn't, they were wondering how are we even going to get in there? Who are we going to find to roll the stone away for us? But sometimes that's the kind of project that life brings to your door. The kind of project that you have to start, even though you don't know how you're going to get it to completion. You just start and you hope that you'll figure it out along the way. That a, a path will open up, that you'll figure it out, that that something will happen and make it possible. Or just maybe, it's worth trying even if you can't quite get all the way there. Of course, when they do get there, they get that very first sign that something is different. They don't have to figure out how to roll the stone away. That part has already been handled for them. And that's when they get the good news from that young man. That angel who tells them, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, but he's not here. He's been raised. Go tell the disciples and Peter and all of them, tell them that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. That's where you'll see him. In Galilee, just like he said. It would be one thing for the risen Christ to start doing his work in Jerusalem, 
right? In the capital, where all the religious leaders are, where all the people have come for a big festival. It would be one thing to do it there. But instead, he's going to meet them in Galilee back in the area they came from, back in their hometown, back in their ordinary lives. This resurrection business is going to have something to do with Monday and Tuesday and a random Thursday in April. It's going to matter for their day-to-day -day lives. Now, friends, I don't know what brought you here today. Maybe it's tradition. This is like always where you are this time of the week. This is where you are. Or maybe this is where you are every Easter. Maybe this is your very first time. But whatever it is that has brought you here today, I think there's something way down deep inside each of us that needs to hear every once in a while. That those great big boulders in our lives that feel immovable, that we can't figure our way around, that we can't just out-muscle or out-drive, out-intellect or out-charisma our way around them, that sometimes God intervenes and rolls the stone away for us. That there are things that happen in this life that we can't entirely explain. And that when we look back on it, often we will see God at work often silently, maybe even unnoticed. But God is at work rolling stones away and making things possible that were once impossible. Take a moment and just think about those things that God has brought you through already. Those times when you got up in the pre-dawn hours without a plan, but knew that you had to go do it anyway. And that somehow, somewhere between leaving at the very crack of dawn and getting face to face with that obstacle, that God was at work. That God was stirring things up, making things possible that seemed impossible even just hours before. Friends, on Easter, that very first Easter, God rolled away the stone and gave those women a message. And it could have stopped right there. The way Mark tells the story, the women are seized with terror and amazement, and they say nothing to anybody. The story could have stopped right there. That fear could have won the day. That terror could have won the day. That being unwilling to risk it all could have won the day. But we know that God rolled that stone away too. And we know that God rolled that stone away because you and I are here now. Because somebody told us the story of Jesus of his life, death, and resurrection. And someone told them, and someone told them, and someone told them. And if you trace back far enough, you get to these women who heard the news and somehow in spite of fear, in spite of terror, were faithful enough to go and say the tomb was empty. Let's go to Galilee and see what this is all about. Let's go back home and see what God is able to do. Friends, if, if God was in the stone rolling away business 2,000 years ago, God might very well be in the stone rolling away business even today. What better day than on Easter than to, to look around and say, God is capable of doing far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. That Jesus' life, death, and resurrection matters not just 2,000 years ago, but here and now. It mattered in Jerusalem, it matters in Galilee, it matters in Monroe. Friends, there is nothing in all of creation 
that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. No amount of fear, no amount of terror, no amount of history, no amount of sickness or death, nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God because the tomb is empty and Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed. Friends, we are able to go out into this world to tell the good news, to hope, to believe, to trust that there is more to this life than it appears on the surface. Why can we do that? Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Friends, we can look at those boulders in our lives and trust that not even they are going to be able to keep God's love from flowing through us into this hurting world. Why? Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Amen.